Hey everybody, Ali Duzet here, medical intuitive and astrologer. And today we have to talk about Gemini season. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you um, in just a second. Let me set it right up. But what makes it Gemini season right now is that the sun just entered Gemini. Okay, so that is why you are whatever sign that you are. Like you probably know if you're a you know, a Leo or a Taurus or whatever. And it's because you were born when the sun was transiting that area of the sky. Okay, that's why you you are what you are as far as your sun sign in the zodiac. Okay, so Gemini season is when the sun is in the constellation of Gemini. It's not actually in it, of course. It's just, if you looked up at the night sky, um, the sun would be kind of like going through the area, the slice of the pie, that is headed in the direction of Gemini. That's basically what we're talking about. Um, so this is the current transits. This is our wheel, okay? And this is the sun right there, circle with a dot in the middle. So whenever you look at a star chart, that's the sun. That's what you wanna look at. And what makes it Gemini season is that the sun is now at zero, zero degrees of Gemini, okay? And this yellow guy is Gemini. It looks like a two um, because it is the twins, okay? Castor and Pollux. Uh, I just read to my kids about Romulus and Remus who founded the Roman Empire, okay? So this is the archetype of duality. Um, early on in my study of astrology, I, I kind of had this idea of Gemini as the good, good twin, evil twin, okay? But that's really not it at all. And it's tempting to think that way, which is really simplistic, but it's kind of more like your hands, okay? Your hands are like mirror images of each other, but actually like if you, they're kind of not, they're what's called chiral, okay? They're kind of mirror images, but not really, because if you put them on top of each other, they don't, they don't actually line up, but they do as a mirror image, right? Um, uh, so if we, if we think about the concept of twins and in the olden times like people would have twins and then the big question was which which kid was the real kid and which kid was the fairy kid right which kid was the changeling that should not really be there right which is the fake kid and people would actually kill twins or like kill one of them and like this was a whole thing in the ancient days right which one is real and which one is the fake and now we know they're both real but but the idea there is what is true and what is the projection? And that is a central question of Gemini. What is real? What is the projection? So what does this mean? What that means is that a lot of times um, people with a lot of Gemini energy can struggle to say what they mean. Um, they can put up kind of a false front to portray an image that is different from what is on the inside, okay? This is not just for Gemini moons. This can be for Gemini suns, or sorry, Gemini suns. It can be for Gemini moons. It can be for Gemini rising. If you have Mercury in Gemini, Venus in Gemini, anything you have in Gemini is gonna have that struggle, okay? If you have Venus in Gemini, um, for example, you might have a, a hard time um, being your authentic self in a romantic relationship. Okay, um, a lot of times I find Venus in Gemini for men dealing with pornography addiction because Gemini is really interested in a whole lot of things and Venus is what you are um, you know, sexually attracted to. And so to have Venus in Gemini can make it a little bit harder to be naturally monogamous, I, I think, um, at least emotionally so. And so um, that's just a placement that I've seen time and time again, especially if it's close to like Chiron, especially if it's in the seventh house, um, you know, just having Venus in Gemini doesn't mean that that's going to be the case. But I find that it often is the case depending on the surrounding placements and other aspects of the chart. Gemini is an air sign. It's very mental and it's very curious. It's the most curious sign of the chart. Whatever you have in Gemini is going to be curious, curious, curious. It wants to know everything. Maybe not be an expert in everything. It doesn't want to go that deep, but it wants to know a little bit about everything. I always call Gemini the kindergarten teacher because it is the sign of um, kind of like a basic learning. I think of it like the elementary school. And across the way from it is Sagittarius, okay? Sagittarius is 
kind of like the college professor. And this is the axis, the Gemini Sagittarius axis to me is the axis of education. It's the axis of learning. And so Gemini is like the kindergarten teacher. It's big preoccupation with H2O is kids. H2O is water and you need to drink it to be healthy. Over here in Sagittarius, their preoccupation with H2O is hydrogen and oxygen atoms are aligning, okay? So over here, Sagittarius is going to be that higher level thinking, the chemistry textbook. It also deals with like doctrine, like religious doctrine, that kind of thing. Uh, on like a religious level, this Gemini is going to be like the little church songs that you learn when you're a little kid. And then like this one is going to be like the hefty doctrinal tomes written by church fathers, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the difference between these two, um, these two things. Uh, even though they're both on the same axis, they they present a little differently. So I'm backing up the chart now to have it align more with the natural wheel. Okay, this um, this is the natural wheel. And I call it that because um, the natural wheel, the natural state of an astrological chart is to have the rising sign pointing at Aries at zero, zero degrees. And when it is pointed that way, then Gemini fills up the third house. And I'm running a, I'm running a, a Placidus chart, not an equal chart. So that's why the house is small and Gemini kind of begins before it. But anyway, the point is that this is where Gemini goes on a natural wheel. Gemini is in charge of this third house, and it, um, it also deals with short trips and transportation, so I think it has a lot to do with, um, oh god, this has to be a whole other video, but Mercury retrograde, we're going through Mercury retrograde right now in Gemini, it entered Gemini at four degrees of Gemini, which is an important degree in Gemini, um, I'll do it in another video, but um, but the na the national focus right now is on issues of transportation and gas prices. Right there's a there's a bunch of problems with gas prices. Gas prices are governed by Gemini, in my opinion, um, because it has to deal with trips and transport. Okay, so this is another interesting thing about this exact. Uh, Gemini season. This is not true every Gemini season, but this time, when the sun entered zero, zero degrees of Gemini, so did Mercury. Okay, this is Mercury right here. He's got his little uh, fancy hat from, uh, he's Mercury, the messenger of the gods, right? The Roman gods. And, oh man, we're right in the middle of Mercury retrograde right now, which means that from the Earth's perspective, okay, so remember, okay, remember that from the Earth's perspective, Mercury is looking back and forth, but Mercury doesn't actually go backwards. What happens with Mercury retrograde is Mercury was going that way. And then from the Earth's perspective, it goes that way. And then from the Earth's perspective, it goes the right back the right way. So it's kind of like whacking us all. That's what the meaning is of retrograde. No planets actually go backwards in their orbit, but they can appear to go backwards from our perspective. And when they do, they're gonna whack the same uh, degrees of the wheel, first forwards, then backwards, then forwards again. So whatever you have in that space on the wheel is going to be extra triggered during that retrograde process. And I think of it as like this chance to answer the questions that have gone unanswered. Every time we have a retrograde, it's kind of like the world around us naturally draws up whatever's inside of our hearts that needs to be addressed within the realm of whatever's being retrograded. So Mercury retrograde is famous because it happens quite a lot. Mercury moves very quickly. And, um, and so we get it a couple times a year. And when it does, we all get to reevaluate what's going on in our lives around the issues of communication because it's the main communicator of the chart. We also get to reevaluate the way that we think about things because Mercury is the thinker of the chart. Mercury governs your thought processes logic. This is the time during Mercury retrograde where no matter what it's in retrograde in, you're going to be invited to reevaluate how you think about things and how you're talking about things. How are you communicating with other people about things? And um, 
in Gemini, this is really interesting because Mercury actually rules Gemini. Mercury is the boss of Gemini, okay? Mercury is the boss. And so this is an unusual Mercury retrograde because many years, um, Mercury doesn't go retrograde in Gemini at all, but this year it is. And this year it's exact the sun as the sun enters Gemini. This is a year that to me, Gemini is getting a little extra oomph of attention for everybody. Uh, because of this conjunction, and you see that it's zero, 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 they're both exact at zero, zero. And, you know, the sun, the sun and Mercury could, I mean, they go exact a couple times a year, every year, um, but not always at zero, zero. And anytime anything's at zero, zero, it's like kind of a big deal. Okay. So this is really quite an interesting placement. Um I don't know. That's just that is just a pretty interesting placement. Um, and I think what it is telling me is that on a national level, we're probably going to be seeing a big um, focus on issues pertaining to thinking, communicating and transportation. OK, because all of those things go to they go with Mercury and they go with Gemini and Mercury retrograde is going to have us be reevaluating those things. Mercury retrograde doesn't force anything to be bad. It doesn't force anything. All it does is naturally invite situations that allow us to process the emotions and stuff going on within our own hearts that have to be processed. So Mercury retrograde is a gift. And I don't know, it's a, it's a pretty exciting time. If, so I really quick, I wanna talk about, I, uh, yes, okay, fine, I'm gonna talk about it. Okay, I want to talk about if you have a birthday between um, June, sorry, between uh, May 10th of this year and June 3rd of this year. If you had a birthday between May 10th and June 3rd this year, this year you are going to have Mercury in retrograde in your solar return chart, which is your birthday chart from this year. And that means that the entire rest of the year, you personally will have this energy of Mercury in retrograde. So that's inviting you to have uh, the chance to slow down, to reevaluate how you think and how you talk, okay? And where you go. What are these short errands that you are taking? Like going to the grocery store, going to the gas station, going to the post office. Those are all the kinds of errands that Gemini is in charge of. Gemini is in charge of the little tiny trips versus Sagittarius, who is in charge of, um, you know, your three month sabbatical to India, for example. Okay. They both are in charge of travel, but this guy is driving to your mom's house for the weekend. This guy is going to London for a month. Okay. Or moving to Nicaragua or, you know, whatever international travel, large scale travel, Sagittarius, tiny travel is, uh, is Gemini. And I would say on a national level, our big concern is with local travel. Can I afford to take my kid to Little League? Like I have my kids in a little like public charter school um, the next town over, but it's like kind of a drive. And now I'm, I make that drive and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is kind of a lot of gas. Like I didn't care about that four years ago. And now I like pretty much super care a lot, you know, along with everybody else. Everybody cares about that now because guess what? The national focus is on these issues of transportation and okay so so anyway so gemini season is going to last from today may 21st up until june 21st at which point we will have the come on brain uh summer solstice correct okay and we're going to be transitioning at that time from gemini into cancer season and that's when all you beautiful cancers were born was between uh, June 21st and July 21st. Okay. But for the next, you know, 30 ish days, we are going to have all of the Gemini birthdays. So if you had a, a birthday in Gemini, these are the energies that you naturally bring with you. Gemini is naturally more intelligent. It's, it's an air sign. It's a mental sign. It's a thinker. Um, Gemini is a communicator. It wants to talk. Gemini's tend to be verbal processors. If you have a reputation for Eleven. That is the Gemini. A lot of times when I read a star chart, when people come to me to read their star charts, um, geez, whenever I have like a Gemini moon or a Gemini rising or a Gemini sun, I'm, I know that I'm going to have to be a little bit careful to make sure that they don't do all the talking. They hired me. I have to do the talking. And so it's hard for me to say, guys, 
cool it. I know you just want to talk, but you want me to talk. Yeah, I really promise. Um, Gemini energy likes to verbally process. And that's kind of true of whatever you have in Gemini, it's going to want to verbally process whatever it is. If your Chiron's in Gemini, um, it might want to verbally process that's your wound. So you might want to not verbally process and hide your processing rather than verbally process because Gemini, again, always is going to deal with what is true and what is the projection. So that is the big struggle with Gemini is learning to be authentic, right? If every sign comes down with its own challenge and thing that, thing that it has to master, the challenge for Gemini is how am I going to master being authentic in my self-expression even when it's going to make other people upset with me, even when other people will think less of me, even when it might damage my reputation, even if it might lead to any of these different possible consequences, how am I going to be authentic in my speech, in my communication, and even in my thinking, okay? Because Gemini is kind of double, right? It's It's got this duality. Gemini's can have a little bit of a struggle. Um, I mean, like, they, uh, we'll just say they change their minds a lot. They can change their minds a lot. It's a sign that can see both sides of the coin and just go back and forth on it. And um, I know Libra is famous for being indecisive and Gemini is not as famous as Libra for that, but it can be a, it can be a thing. Um, and it can also just be an emotional thing where um, like mood swings could be, could definitely be a Gemini thing. If you have like a Gemini moon, overthinking could be a Gemini thing. If you have um, Mercury in Gemini, if you have your sun in Gemini, you could be an overthinker, the moon in Gemini as well. Um, because Gemini is one of the most thinky signs of the Zodiac. It just has so many thoughts and it has so many interests and it's so excited about all sorts of things. And it just wants to learn about everything. And as it learns about everything, um, some things can just kind of, you know, fall by the wayside. It's kind of the energy of the jack of all trades and master of none. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be the master of none. Uh, if you have a lot of Gemini, of course not. It, everything depends on what else is in your chart and the energy that you bring into a situation. There is nothing set in stone as far as how a chart has to show up for you. And I was talking about this with a friend recently, uh, this, this morning, that recently, this morning today, I was talking to a friend about this. She was talking about the difficult placements in a particular chart and kind of asking like, are we doomed? You know, this chart looks, it looks tough. So am I doomed? And I don't think that is true. My own chart has, um, you know, it's fair share of red lines and squares and oppositions. And they used to be really difficult for me. And I used to feel like, oh my gosh, uh, like these are tough placements. And like, I just can't get my act together. And it's because, you know, my son is square Jupiter and like all of this kind of thing. But what I have discovered in my own life is that as I have learned to throw myself equally into both ends of my oppositions and flow into my squared planets like they can all be activated at once and actually this morning as I was thinking about this concept I had to go in my mind and try and remember if if I really had the t-squares I was thinking at all because I thought well it comes so easily now maybe it's trines after all and I couldn't remember and then I had to do the math once you do enough astrology you can picture any wheel in your head it really is true it will come with time you just keep studying it will come with time but I was like okay, I have a Virgo sun in the in third house and I have, you know, my Jupiter in the 11th house. And I'm like, no, that's definitely a 90 degree angle. No, it must be a square. You can do this too over time as you practice, practice, practice. Um, but I definitely have a lot of squares, but they present well for me now because I live in integrity. And, you know, you learn how to throw yourself into both ends. A square or an opposition is not the end of the world, okay? If you come into it with the right attitude, you can shift how it presents for you. And so there is no such thing as like a bad placement on a chart. It all depends on you and the attitude that you're showing up with. Okay, well, anything else that we want to talk about about this Gemini season? I guess, um, here, let's just take a very quick look at the overall chart. Okay, overall chart. Um, this Gemini season began, it was born, it took its first breath with the moon in Aquarius. And so I'm going to guess that 
we're going to have, you know, the sun, the national, the national, you know, ambiance is going to be with our, you know, acquaintances, Gemini rules acquaintances, it rules siblings as well. Um, and again, thinking, talking, going on little trips and going to places. Um, the moon in Aquarius, Aquarius is a revolutionary sign. It's a sign that wants change and it wants it now and it wants it for the greater good. And so this placement, as I'm just looking at it and looking at the, you know, the sun and Mercury exact here, and we have this Mercury retrograde situation um, that is really fascinating. I'm going to do a different video on it, but this Mercury retrograde situation, it just makes me think that the national focus for this Gemini season is going to be on these kind of revolutionary ideals, particularly as they per as they pertain to um, to transportation related issues. So let's just take a little tiny look. Okay. So okay. So that's what the moon is up to, and um, and that's true no matter what time of day that we set it to. Um, <clears throat> the for today because of how the moon is so even though i just picked a random time that's what i mean to say i picked a random time just so that we could see the natural wheel so you could see that gemini natively goes here this is the house that it rules is bing 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 right here but even though even though the house placement doesn't matter for what i'm reading right now the moon will still be in aquarius for this for the first breath of this season, the moon transits one sign every two and a half days. It's the fastest mover of a chart. And it is possible to have the moon be in two separate signs in a single day. Um, but but for the for but for this, it was in Aquarius when when the sun entered Gemini. So this Gemini season, I think we'll have a little bit of a moony flavor of Aquarius, and we'll just have to see how that plays out in the world. Okay, thank you guys for being here. I hope you learned a little bit about Gemini. I'm really excited to see how Gemini season plays out in the coming weeks. And I don't know, I guess I'll catch you in a while in my video on Mercury retrograde and gas prices. Okay, so you guys don't forget to like and subscribe if you like videos that are cool like this one. Okay, love you guys. Bye.